What's going on guys, Fashion1145 here, and today I'm going to be showing you guys the Tier 8 Russian Medium, the T44. So let's get right into it. So the T44 is very different from its predecessor in armor and gun handling and maneuverability. As we're going to see here, the T44 does get the max gun on the T43 with an increased rate of fire, I believe. But it's not really your top option because you do have a choice between two 100mm guns on the T44. Um, and then aside from that, there is also a tier 6 gun that's pretty useless, a tier 7 122 mil gun that I would not recommend using because of the very slow rate of fire, as you can see, 3.02, and only 400 alpha damage, really bad dispersion, really bad aim time, just don't use it. Uh, this is the best gun though, the LB1 versus the 100mm D1 D10T, and so the LB1 gets increased aim time, increased dispersion, and better rate of fire. So that's why you go with the LB1, and that is definitely the preferred gun to go with on this tank. Uh, looking at the stats, we can see that the whole armor is 90 millimeters at the front at a good angle, 75 at the sides, and 45 at the rear. You're gonna get penned to the sides and rear easily. Turret armor is 120 at the front, 100 at the sides and rear. Looking at maneuverability, speed limit 51 km per hour, and traverse speed is 47, and turret traverse 48. So those two in combination make you able to turn around and easily circle your opponent. So now looking in armor inspector, we're gonna get to see a look. T44 here, it has 70 degrees of gun depression from the front, which is pretty good. Obviously, turret rotates 180 degrees both sides, but at the rear, you only get 5 degrees of gun depression. On the other hand, you do get 23 degrees of gun elevation, which allows you to sit next to ridges, poke up your gun with that great elevation, and shoot up on enemies that are trying to get the gun depression to shoot down on you. So looking at the collision module, we can see that the only space armor on the tank is at the turret at the gun mantlet and it is 120 millimeters thick so it is fairly reliable and looking in the internal modules we have the engine in the back ammo rack at the back of the turret fuel tank right in front of the engine but we also have ammo racks at the sides of the tanks right above the tracks which makes it very vulnerable and of course we have the radio so now taking a look at the armor penetration model Let's take a look at a uh, lower tier gun from another medium as well. How about, hmm, what should we choose? Look at all those tier sixes. Okay, here we go. How about the Cromwell with the 75mm Vickers gun? So, as you can tell, if you're angled, then there's pretty much no chance of pending the upper plate. Sides are kind of easy to pen, but if we're looking more realistically, say you're pointing down at the Cromwell, then the upper plate becomes harder to hit. Still able to pen though, and lower plate becomes easy, but the lower plate is a small target. Sides and rear are going to get easily penned, so there's that too. And yeah, if you angle well, I think it'll be good. Looking at the turret too, you, there isn't that big of a chance of pen pretty much at all. As you can see, penetration chance 0-0-2%, pretty low. So unless you aim in the specific green parts with that gun, which is very hard because the turret rotation is very quick, the tank is very maneuverable. Also, there is a small, small, small weak point at the top that pretty much nobody's going to ever hit with your maneuverability. So if we look at a tier 10 gun, like let's say the... 215B's 120mm L1A1 gun, uh, yeah, you're pretty much going to get penned everywhere, unless your front angled armor is at a very, very sharp angle, like 70 degrees or so, 73 degrees in that case, you're going to get penned easily, especially in the sides and rear. Looking at the turret, same story, unless they get an unlucky shot on the sides of the mantlet, you're going to get penned regardless, spaced armor or anything, unless they hit the gun or that unlucky part of your turret mail then you're gonna get pounded and now if we look at the same gun that the t44 gets the lb1 now we're gonna see that at a sharp angle you can bounce shots off your frontal plate side shots easily penned but frontal plate is fairly reliable at an angle which helps you when poking around corners you can use your maneuverability to back up and forth confuse your enemies and then use your frontal plate to your advantage to bounce shots so, taking a look at some gameplay now that we're going to be starting off with, this first game is the most impressive. I'm platooned up with Dead Ninja Storage, 
and we're going to be doing a tier 8 platoon t44 and is3 i believe it is yeah and so this first game isn't very impressive but i did want to showcase something a unique tactic that many of you might not know but you will see when we get there so we start in a tier 8 game and i'm looking and we see tier 9 game okay mine's good for mediums because if you take the hill on this map you basically have lots and lots of control over how the game works and where the enemies are going to go and what they're going to do so you can basically control everything from the hill so taking control of the hill on mine is very important however they have a t54 and a t44 and we have a t54 and a t44 so i'm thinking yeah well we can probably take the hill with a little bit of gold spam and uh you know that t54 doing good and then i see the t54 shooting off to the left and i was like okay you've got to be kidding me what are you doing so the t54 decided that going hill was not a good plan i was like no don't do that he was like nah bruh and so i had me on the rock their t54 is already up there puts a shot to me and i'm like okay awesome great start so we back up behind this rock and now we're just placing our frontal aid at a sharp angle and waiting for enemies, side of a T44, kind of luck shot, yes please, and he bounces off the truck. Now here's where we back up, try and get a shot on the M103, but it's kind of risky, just push up behind the rock and stay behind cover. So I'm at a pretty tight spot here, and we see the mediums are doing what they should be pushing up over the hill, get another kind of lucky pen, but we're kind of in a bad position here. So this is where I implement reverse side scraping if you know what side scraping is reverse side scraping is essentially where your tank is turned around in the opposite position so as you can see i was able to bounce a shot off my side and put another lucky shot into that t44 which is a great example of reverse side scraping the only problem is though that normal side scraping have a lot better frontal armor than reverse side scraping so if they if i side scrape too much then i'm going to be showing my rear which can probably even be penned with he so there's that problem as well so game isn't going very well for us um they've taken control of the hill my platoon mate takes out their su-152 and then the m103 goes down with a lucky engine fire but now things are starting to look up a bit so we decide to rush up the hill and see if we can take control because like i said before the taking control of the hill is very important see a t44 on pretty low health and we just okay we low roll that's awesome Anywho, we're going after this T44. He gets taken out by our Yag Panther 2. ISA decides to book it, and now we basically almost have control of the hill, except for that T54 up here with me. I load APCR because the T54 has very strong frontal armor at a very good angle, and I want to pen my shots so that I can win this one-on-one -on -one engagement. But it seems like he's kind of running away. I also have a tortoise up here with me, which is very helpful. But as if you can see on the minimap, Heavies and TVs are starting to push up on that tortoise, so I need to make my move quickly. Oh my goodness, all these lucky pens. What is going on? Thank you, Aren't Jesus, though. Thank you. Um, we put another APCR shell into his tracks, tracking him permanently, and we are able to save our tortois from dying. So we save him. He's on a little sliver of health, and that becomes useful because any tank that's still alive still does damage regardless of the amount of health it has and what do you know the is just so happens to be the last tank on their team because their team seemed to do a pretty good job of cleaning up i tried to go for the yolo jump awkwardly get trapped right in front of his gun i was gonna repair and then i was like nah and then i took a shot i was like okay cool and yeah down goes the is so that game wasn't particularly a very special game in the t44 and didn't necessarily showcase all the strengths of the t44 but it did showcase that you can side scrape and reverse side scrape in the t44 which is something that you guys might use so post game stats we're gonna see that we ended up getting 2400 damage 1000 base xp kind of average So now we're going to be moving on to a fun game on Copperfield, which I had to edit every shot and calculate the damage in the video because my game decided to crash at the end and I couldn't get the post-game stats or I was just too stupid to record the post-game stats right after. Anyway, still platooned up with the Dead Ninja Storage from Titan. We're in a top tier game. It's like, hell yeah. And uh, we're looking to flank. They have one, two, three mediums and we have one, two, three. We have higher tier mediums, so I'm looking to flank, hopefully getting my medium friends to flank. Uh, no, KV3, you're not a medium. 
Oh, come on. Even my platoon mate's telling me, please don't do it. Okay, he just doesn't care, I guess. Uh, yeah, for the most part, oh, a little flea's been spotted. We put a shot in between those two, whatever they're called, and we look for another shot in the window. Nope. Okay, so we're starting off okay. Do some damage. Don't take any damage. Don't get spotted. I'll take that. I'm looking to put another shot into the flea as he's running away, and <laughs> no, my god, look at that thing go. Yeah, no chance. Anywho... We're going to keep pushing up on this side, looking for a flank. I always like coming to the side and not pushing too aggressively, but getting sniper shots to help the heavies on the hill. And as you can see, I'm about to demonstrate some super sick sniping. Okay, never mind. Super sick sniping. Let's try that again. Let's demonstrate some super sick sniping. We're right back up. And there's this T25 sitting right there, and it's like these juicy tracks, and look at it. And I even load APCR, and then he backs up, and I'm like, okay, never mind. But we do put a shot into the T28 prototype, load AP, because we don't need APCR for the side of a T28 prototype. About to put another shot in, sneak one in, sneak one in, nope. Not this time, RNG. And then I notice that there's a T44 and a T43 pushing up on me this side. And I have two friends with me but that might not completely cover it. So I'm kind of playing cautiously here, putting shots in T44. Oh, look, another T44 pops up. And this one I decide I need help, yeah. So I'm just hoping that everything over on the hill is going fine. We're trying to put shots in that T44, but he gets away. And now I'm just kind of like waiting them for them to make the first move. The T44 separates and doesn't go with his friends and the T43 decides that you know what I can totally take this T44 on my own. I start spamming APCR because it's kind of a tough situation where I need to pen every shot. So I load adrenaline as well, goodbye credits, and bounce a shot by side scraping there quickly. I'm don't re not really worried about the EZ8 because that tank kind of sucks. Uh, I'm really focused on taking out the T43. Notice that the T44 is not paying attention to me. I think if he was, I would have died a lot earlier and wouldn't have gotten this much damage off. But I take out the T43, turn around hope that that T44 ignores me a little more but it seems like he's done with his job so I'm going to focus on him target prioritization and shoot an APCR shells in the dirt whoop, whoop. but anyway you want to prioritize higher tier targets because they have better DPM better damage more health blah blah blah, blah. another APCR shell disappears into the black hole of world tanks RNG uh, so there's a free offering of the EZ8 there, so I take that. And now I'm just praying that I don't get shot, put my angle tank, blah, blah, but yeah, that doesn't work. And then we have a platoon mate out here, snipes that T44 from long distance. I just let him know that I was kind of dumb and only did 2500 damage and could have killed that T44 if I hadn't been, if I had just aimed. Oh god, I had that problem so many times where I just don't aim my shots in sniper mode in those one-on-one -on -one engagements. And if you want to ensure your shots going in, you you might want to do that. But it does provide a disadvantage of whether you can actually see what's going around you. So I want to see what the EZ8 was doing. But yeah, I mean, it could have gotten better, but that's it is what it is. This E25 is going to be a bit annoying because you know it's it's really fast E25 low profile and he's just going to try and run away and makes a mistake. Instead of running left, he runs right where my platoon mate can easily catch up with him and the game can easily crash. I cut that. And when I get back in the game, I see that the E25 is dead. So, transitioning to the next game, I just want to let you guys know that the T44, its play style is more aggressive than the T43, definitely. Because it does have okay deep, or it actually has pretty good DPM, but it doesn't have the best rate of fire. So you don't want to play too aggressively with it because it isn't the most flexible because of that slowed rate of fire. But the average damage increase does help it. And I really enjoy tanks with higher alpha because that means that getting one shot off is more important and more like substantial towards your team than getting like one shot off in a Matilda that does no damage, even though you reload in like half a second. So as you can see, we are on the new Desert Sands. I should probably stop calling it that because it's almost the next update and it's not going to be that new anymore. So our comment decides to push up pretty aggressively against their mediums. There's an India Panzer and an E2. And then another T43 and another comment and another Pershing. And I'm like, oh my god, holy mother of mediums. So yes, please. 
these guys are just going to ignore me up here. I use this plane, which is really useful in uh, mediums on this map. I really like it, especially for low profile tanks. We set the Indian Panzer on fire, hide behind the plane. Nobody really cares, apparently. So we're just going to keep putting shots into that Indian Oh, Pershing. What's up? Yeah, just awkwardly angle my armor. Oh, get a bounce. Yeah, that's the thing about the T-44, different from the T-43, is that you couldn't get lucky bounces like that in the T-43 against the Pershing. One, well, you, I mean, I guess you have more armor. But if you angle it, it is so much more effective, and it can actually get you bounces at times when you wouldn't expect it. So all of a sudden, we're down by two tanks, and I'm like, awesome. Get another bounce, put an AP shell into his sight, and we take out that T-43, so now we're only down one tank. To get another bounce by a little tier 6 and we prioritize the Pershing because he's a higher tier can do more damage okay what is going on I just bounced one from the rear took one from the Pershing or from the E2 sorry Pershing goes down we're circling an E2 uh, look at that maneuver ability it's pretty good I mean it's not as fast as the T43 get another bounce but it definitely has amazing track traverse and turret traverse so now we're kind of in a weird position where the comet is focusing us e2 goes down so now i can go after the comet and he pretty much stands no chance here with a red fire we're able to take him out and we see an i6 here and we load apcr because this gun does not get very good pen at all try and get a snapshot on the i6's turret but that's not going to work and then we see thine most majestic centurion or i mean churchill 7 sitting up in thy natural habitat with thy stock turret. I probably don't even need APCR, which is what I realize at this moment. But thy majestic cent or stop, Churchill. Thy majestic Churchill 7-1 goes down with the sh most majestic shot of my tank. An AP shell, by the way. I'm not spamming gold, I promise. Now I'm just gonna lose some more gold. Anywho, so we're gonna start shooting that IS-6 in that little angled armor that is flat at the angle that we were at when we took the shot. We're gonna put another one in. No, we're not. It's gonna magically disappear because thanks, World Tanks. And I'm gonna try and juke the IS backwards. I just take another shot, put one more into him, and he's left on 100 health. And everyone's just missing shots until the Tiger 1 slips out and no one gets him. So, once again, another victory in the T44. It kind of shows the aggressive play and the use of DPM and rate of fire in that aggressive play. And also some lucky bounces. I mean, you can get a lot of those in this tank. So, in the post game stats, you can see we got 3,600 damage and 1,200 basics. So, taking a look at the final game we have here on Black Goldville, it is a tier 9 game, but there are only two tier 9s on each team. Once again, still platooned up with Dead Ninja Storage. This was all from a platoon session we did with him and his IS-3, and me and the T-44 is awesome. We won tons of games. We did really well. So, shout out to him for playing with me. Uh, yeah, really strong player. Anywho, getting to the gameplay, they have one medium tier 7 so yes please but this isn't really a type of map where 1v1 in mediums is much of an option because a flank isn't really accessible here so yeah we load in we get midridge side and oh yes please we get midridge side yes booyah so we're gonna haul ourselves up to that midridge location on this map and yeah We'll just use our maneuverability to beat everyone else up there. We kind of see everyone else going this middle section, and that's becoming increasingly popular for battles because I'd assume because of like the hill terrain down there, and there are a few places you can use as cover. But I really like this section of the map. Put a shot into the Tiger P and get behind these rocks because, as you can see, these rocks provide cover. There's kind of like a crane thingy there that provides cover from sniping from the town, which nobody goes to. Put another shot in the Tiger P, and we are gonna be able to put another shot because he gets himself stuck on the rocks driving up. So we get a free 900 damage to start the game off. Looking down, just making sure that our teammates are doing all right. Also checking the mini map. So now, since nobody else seems to be up here, we're just gonna try and put a shot in the tortoise. No thank you, I guess. Thanks, RNG. We see two guys sitting in the back in their base, the Ag Panther and the T32, which probably isn't the most effective use of a heavy tank camping at base, but I'm not gonna question it because they're not on the team. The tortoise looks like he really wants some T44. 
and I'm like nah so I get out of there and I put a shot into the Ag Panther I'm hoping that I can't get spotted at this distance but little do I realize that I got spotted ages ago and I'm seeing my platoon mate kind of get destroyed I come out to help put one into the tortoise's back I take a shot from the Ag Panther and the T32 and the Ag Panther on adrenaline so no thank you and now we're going to kind of put our frontal armor at a sharp angle. I was going to demonstrate a bounce, but the Ag Panther ended up shooting the dirt, which is a win-win either way. So we're going to put a blind shot into the bush and hope for the best. Look around. We see T-34, not much of a threat. Tortoise, big threats, kind of like a really big DPM machine coming towards us. We load APCR to get his side armor. We're going to get another shot. He bounces speed boost and we load at his weak spot. Miss with APCR, always love that. And this is something I've never ever done before in like the 7800 battles I had at the time. Never done this. So, we shot on the tortoise and I use this really weird like cover dip thing in the hole to kind of like protect myself from taking more damage. We get the tortoise to fire off a random shot, we put another shot into his commander's bola, and here comes IS-6 to save the day and take out the tortoise, woo! So thank you IS-6 for that. And M103 is definitely the next target because he is the higher tier, he's on low health, and he is a threat, especially because he's on adrenaline, so I want to take him out kind of missed that first shot we're running low on APCR everybody's call calling me gold spammer in the chat and comments yeah oh no anyway but we really need to fire gold here because it is a very important shot to make even if it's at the rear I want to pen that shot no matter what to take out a tank and we got a lucky bounce off our side so t32 here and we are on very low health a one shot for the t32's alpha we put a snapshot into his lower plate with APCR and we call for help kind of trying to bait a shot. We have really fast maneuverability and pretty good turret armor, so I'm fairly confident in myself bouncing a shot. Pop out, we bounce one, we APCR him, and I'm certain that I can reload before him, so this is where knowing reload times also helps. But that doesn't matter because he decides to scurry on over after me. So I place my tank at an angle, hoping for a bounce on the front plate, but he makes the job easy and I low roll, oh my god. I'm so lucky I did not die there. So I'm waiting, waiting, waiting. He pops out again, and I take the kill. Two kills. We get a win, 7-4. And yeah, that was a pretty fun game on Black Gold Veil. And showed good use of the midridge. Uh, I mean, not necessarily good use, because not all the tanks went up. But effective use and map awareness. So, as you can see, we got... 3,900 damage. So that was the T44 for you guys. I currently have the T54, so stay tuned for a gameplay of that. On the way to the T62A, which definitely promotes aggressive gameplay. And I can't wait to get this tank. It's going to be so much fun to play. So yeah, that was the T44 full review guide and gameplay. Thank you guys so much for watching and stay tuned for more awesome tank videos.